Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about gonadotropin releasing hormones as well as gonadotropes and their pharmacological integration. Now to begin with, guys, we have already seen in the previous video that from the hypothalamus, okay, from the hypothalamus, gonadotropin releasing hormones are getting produced. Now these gonadotropin releasing hormones are coming to the anterior pituitary via hypothalamo hypophysial portal system. Okay, via blood, this GnRH is going to come to your anterior pituitary. Now, in the anterior pituitary, which cells are there? Gonadotropes are there. Now, this GnRH is acting on the gonadotropes. Now, whenever GnRH is acting on the gonadotropes, who is going to be produced? FSH is going to be produced. LH is going to be produced. We have discussed what is the function of this FSH. FSH helps in follicular development and helps in the production of estrogen. And LH helps in production of, not production of LH, uh, helps in ovulation as well as uh, progesterone production okay by uh, by ovulation there will be a ruptured graphene follicle and that graphene follicle under the influence of LH is going to produce a progesterone in the previous video we have discussed all these things an important point I want you to note here is that see this GnRH whatever is coming from the hypothalamus it's not coming continuously it is released in pulsatile doses it is released in regular intervals not continuous okay so GnRH is coming down to anterior pituitary in a pulsatile doses then only you will have production of FSH as well as LH. Now if you ask me what happens if there is a continuous release if from the hypothalamus if there is continuous release of okay if there is continuous if there is continuous release of GnRH onto gonadotropes, then what will happen? Now, still FSH and LH are going to come? No, guys. Then, in this condition, FSH levels goes down and LH levels goes down. So, what I am trying to put into your mind is that continuous stimulation of gonadotropes, then whenever you continuously stimulate gonadotropes, then FSH levels and LH levels are going to go down. FSH production as well as LH, LH production is going to go down. The entire hypothalamo pituitary ovarian axis is inhibited. You need to have a pulsatile release of GnRH, not continuous. Now, how we can use this concept in pharma, in treating certain uh, abnormal conditions? Now, let's see guys. First of all, I am going to tell you certain drugs which are nothing but the GnRH analogs which means GnRH like drugs. They will act on the gonadotropes just like GnRH. So what are the examples? The GnRH analogs example sir. See the GnRH analog example sir. Uprolite, naphrilin, gucerin, gucerilin. So drugs which are ending with the letter relin, relin not relics. Relics are antagonistic drugs. GnRH antagonists are called as relics. Now, we are going to discuss about GnRH analogs, nafrilin, gosrilin, busrilin, as well as the luprolite. These are the famous drugs. Now, see, we can use these drugs, GnRH like drugs, in certain conditions, in treating certain conditions. Which conditions? Whenever you use these drugs in a pulsatile dose, they can treat conditions like delayed puberty as well as in anovulatory infertility. You can ask me how, sir. Very simple. Let's talk about delayed puberty first. So, what exactly is delayed puberty guys? The name itself is there. The puberty got delayed. Puberty is delayed. Which means, for example, take there was this one female who is 16 years old. And now that 16 years old female haven't developed breast and she didn't started her menarche. Okay, menses haven't started. Now, we can say that definitely she is having delayed puberty. Now, what we have to do? We have to start her menses we have to start her menarche we have to make her uh, to develop the breast tissue so how we can achieve that we know the concept from the hypothalamus gnrh is going to be released that gnrh is a one which acts on the anterior pituitary helps in the production of fsh and lh whenever there is fsh follicles will develop whenever there is lh ovulation will happen so by using this concept we can treat this condition how so you have to use this gnrh drugs okay gnrh analogs in what format? You have to use them in pulsatile dose. So, inject this female GnRH analogs in a pulsatile dose. Whenever you are giving GnRH analogs in pulsatile doses, what will happen? Her anterior pituitary will now start to release FSH and LH. That FSH in that female is going to cause follicular development in her ovaries. Now, whenever there is follicular development, there is production of estrogen. That estrogen will help in the breast development in this female. 
and whenever her anterior pituitary is releasing LH, that LH is helping in her ovulation. So she started her menarche. Menarche is started. Okay, this is how. And also there is one more condition called as anovulatory infertility. What exactly is anovulatory infertility, guys? Now this female is suffering with a condition called as infertility. She is not getting pregnant. Why she is not getting pregnant? There is no problem with her partner. There is no problem. But the problem is within herself. What is that problem? An ovulation. She is not ovulating. She is not releasing the egg. That's why she is not getting pregnancy. That's why she is infertile. Now what we have to do? We have to make her ovulate. Now the classical example of anovulatory infertility is PCOS. There was this one condition called as a PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, where most of the females are not ovulating. They won't ovulate. Now how we can make her ovulate is by again same concept, give her GnRH analog group of drugs in a pulsatile dose. Whenever you are giving these drugs in a pulsatile dose, they will act on anterior pituitary. Anterior, anterior pituitary will release FSH, LH. LH is the one which helps in the process of ovulation. So if she is not ovulating, make her ovulate by giving GnRH analogs in a pulsatile dose. That's the concept. Now, let's talk about usage of GnRH analogs in a continuous doses. Continuous giving of GnRH analogs. In which conditions we will use these drugs guys? Now in a conditions like treating precocious puberty. So what exactly is precocious puberty? Now the female is just 8 years old. Now this 8 years old female is uh, like uh, she have developed the breast, breast tissue. Now this 8 year old female, now she have started her menarche. Now this is something not good, right? Now 8 years, she is a very little girl and now she is starting her menses. This is not good. We have to inhibit the menses. We have to stop the menses in this female. So we, what we have to do actually, we have to inhibit the hypothalamo pituitary ovarian axis in this female. So how we can do that? Yes, we know the concept. Whenever you give GnRH analogs in a continuous format, what will happen? The anti the, the gonadotropes are going to be inhibited in the anterior pituitary. Gonadotropes will be inhibited. Whenever gonadotropes are inhibited, there is no FSH, there is no LH. Whenever there is no FSH, uh, there is no LH. Now, can, can she develop her follicles? No, follicular development is not going to happen. Can she ovulate? No, because there is no FSH, no LH. Why? Why? Because you are giving GnRH analogs in a continuous format. Okay, you, know, you are giving in a continuous format that will cause the desensitization of the receptors on gonadotropes, no FSH, no LH. Okay, so no menses. So that's how we can treat the precocious puberty. Now, this GnRH and LOX in a continuous format are not only going to treat the precocious puberty but also some other conditions. What are these other conditions like endometriosis? So what exactly is this endometriosis? Growing of endometrium, growth of endometrium outside the uterine cavity. Actually, the endometrium is a lining within the uterine cavity. What if it is growing outside the uterine cavity? That condition, that's a pathological condition, right? That pathological condition is called as an endometriosis. Now, why endometriosis will happen? Do you know? One of the most important predisposing factor, one of the most important risk factor is hyperestrogenic states. Whenever a female is having hyperestrogenic states, now this hyperestrogenic states are the ones responsible, one of the most important risk factor for endometriosis. Now, what we have to do? We have to decrease the estrogen levels in this female. How we can decrease the estrogen levels? By giving GnRH analogs continuously. Whenever you give GnRH analogs continuously, gonadotropes are going to decrease the FSH production. Whenever there is no FSH, follicles won't develop. Whenever the follicles are not developing, estrogen is not there. Whenever the estrogen levels goes down, automatically endometriosis can be treated. Okay, so that's one way. And the conditions like breast cancer and prostate cancer. Remember, in breast cancer, one of the most important uh, predisposing factor, one of the most important risk factor is estrogens. Estrogens are the ones which are causing the breast cancer, hyperestrogenic states. Same concept. Whenever there is a breast cancer, you have to decrease the estrogen levels in this patient. Otherwise, the estrogen will be a stimulant for the cancer to grow. It will widespread. The cancer will widespread. So, what you have to do? In the conditions of breast cancer, you have to decrease the estrogens. How you can do that? By giving GnRH and locks in a continuous format. 
same even in prostate cancer in males the high levels of dihydrotestosterone dht are the ones responsible for the growth of the prostate cancer you have to decrease the testosterone how you can do that now in this male give gnrh continuously whenever you give gnrh continuously what will happen the gonadotropes will stop producing fsh and lh whenever there is no lh testosterone production will be decreased okay testosterone production will be decreased dihydrotestosterone will be decreased so that will be effective in treating the prostate cancer okay so these are certain drugs and their correlation with the gnrh gonadotropin releasing hormone and as well as gonadotropes hope the video is helpful thank you